I went to preach somewhere along the southern part of Nigeria and when I was done I was on my way going and we got to a very small but mysterious village people live mysteriously long within that place you would see obituaries 120 something 130 something on my way going to preach I saw an obituary of a man 136 he just died I said no once you see consistency there is a grace within this region maybe one grandfather entered a covenant with God and God swore that his children and children's children will live long I want to show you the value of impartation because I know that in my life as a man of God there are arrows that will fly by day I travel all the time and I don't want to die young not because of fear I need this body for the assignment rather than foolishly just saying I shall not die you search for the grace that has proven it experientially are we together listen we're about to pray I'm not wasting your time when we were done preaching mighty beating on our way returning because we needed to connect by road to an airport and then we'll fly back and I told the driver stop when we got to that place I came out where the obituary was it was a Yoruba nation a Yoruba city so um, I couldn't speak Yoruba and everybody there could not really speak English like that and we found somebody who could speak limited English we said where is the oldest man in this village we are pastors we want to just see him and honor him and have him bless us because we've discerned that there is a grace for long life I saw some women standing there they were looking old but I just left them then they took us to one man when we entered the place the man was laughing and I would talk then they will interpret we said sir we're just young people we are pastors and we know that there is a grace for long life here and we're pleading if you would just speak a blessing the man laughed with confidence see those who carry this thing bar they know they have it a hospital does not travel around looking for patients when you are a patient you find the hospital and go there the man looked at us and he said kneel down he didn't say you are a man of God I don't care where you are coming from you are looking for the grace for long life kneel down I got down on my knees and the man began to pray and when he began to pray it's it I felt like a crown was being put upon my head once he was done praying we honored him bless God for him we are on our way sir to get into the car and then I felt led to go and thank the women who were standing there when I now went to thank the women the 136 year old by the way he was a man of God who just died they said that's his wife his wife was still alive I said let's go back ah no if the man had died two have become one since I could not meet the man that woman was maybe 120 something she was still standing no help no aid no nothing bright vision I said my God graces are real oh. I'm telling you grace until you encounter the careers you will think these stories are lies graces are real there are individuals when you encounter you will never beg again they carry mysterious graces our generation does not know the mystery of impartation is the reason why many people are genuinely called but they do not rise we met the woman and they now interpreted again we said since this is your husband mama this one you are, I don't know if it is to call you a great grandmother but please this small boy these small children who have come please can you just speak the blessing of a mother and the woman laughed she said follow me we went into a room and she was showing us the pictures she was the wife of his youth I hope you know those days they married very early as teenagers and she was the wife of his youth till old age when she was done showing us the pictures we said please pray and she took off her shoes and put her bare feet on the ground and we knelt down for the next 15 minutes this woman was raining blessings from her spirit these are the stories you will not see on social media unfortunately behind every result there are graces that drive it are you learning now when I carried that grace 
in addition to my obedience to scripture I knew that no devil would take my life before my time and you you need to know how much death has tested this man to know what I'm saying let your power Holy Ghost power rest on me rest on me listen I saw the man Dr. Miles Munro a daily revered mentor I saw that he had a unique grace that even though he excelled as a man of God he had governmental influence this man was an advisor to presidents and kings I saw that the model of his apostolic ministry what was God was calling me to beyond just the church walls I saw that this man exerted tremendous influence when Nelson Mandela late of South Africa when he came out of prison Dr. Miles Munro was one of the delegates that were sent to go and receive him I said this is a grace a grace that goes beyond church walls so that your relevance does not just end with signs and wonders you can speak to kings and nobles with intelligence I coveted that grace let me tell you I was in worry the south southern part of Nigeria the night he died I went to preach for a conference at a conference for a church I woke up in the morning to pray God is my witness I felt a sharp pain very sharp pain around my ribs I didn't know what was happening spirit connections are real a very sharp pain and I said what is happening a few minutes later on the pain left and I just saw later on an obituary that he crashed in a plane crash and I said God what is this what happened but I knew something had rested upon my life that brings influence beyond the church walls it takes more than being sincere for the nation and non-church organizations to call you I've had the honor to stand before kings I've had the honor to speak before nobles on non-church non-christian activities I know where the grace came from graces are like addresses you can know where they came from is someone learning I hope I'm not sounding arrogant I'm just challenging you because something must rest upon you tonight are we together Do you know Charles and Francis Hunter of late? Yes, they, they had one of the greatest healing ministries in modern times. I watched their videos. Tremendous healings that you would think are exaggerations. I saw it. I bought their videos about 16 hours of their healing videos. And then it was not CDs. It was um, uh, 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 VHS. What they call it? I hope I'm right yes cassette you will listen and sleep and wake up and listen again if your recharge card if your rechargeable lantern dies you power it up and continue do you know my plan was to go to us i think i've said it perhaps in your church i was to go to us my desire was to go and serve not to go even if it was just to scrub their toilets not human worship just to honor them unfortunately that did not happen but even though i did not meet them that hunger and that sincerity, the grace still landed. Grace still landed. One of our fathers of faith, not too long ago, I had the honor of being with him alone in the room. And I said, sir, please pray for me. Just to place your hand and speak over me. And he asked one of his sons to give way. And I was alone with him. I would not say in open what he said in the prayer. But I knew something came from upon my life. We are products of many graces. When you see possibilities happen in the life of people, please hear me, Takoradi. We are products of many graces. Why am I saying this to you? Because when God sends a word to Jacob, it is supposed to be lighted upon Israel. There is no monopoly of grace. There is no monopoly of the anointing. We receive so that we become channels. Are we together now? But let me tell you this before we pray. There are three laws 
that govern receiving impartation number one is called discernment when Elijah was about to impart upon Elisha Elisha was not the only person who wanted the anointing there were other sons of the prophets too but Elisha was the one who discerned Elijah said if you can see me was he not looking at him already that kind of scene is not a physical scene if you can discern what I represent as touching the message of God he said he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother in the name of your husband in the name of your tribesman you will not receive a prophet's reward number two honor the second law that governs impartation is honor honor a grace you despise will never flow to you a vessel you despise will never be able to bless you it doesn't matter how many hands are laid upon you there are people today i have vowed as a covenant that i will honor them in life and in death it's not about being perfect it's a covenant commitment noah took wine and he was drunk and when he was drunk as a father he fell shamefully on the ground and one of his sons came and saw the father's nakedness and laughed at it and called the brothers and said can you come and imagine our father embarrassing himself like this when one of the sons came he said you are not serious he got a cloth and turned backwards but do you know as drunk as Noah was when he got up he knew who saw him nobody told him the grace was still there he said you looked at my nakedness a servant of servants shall you be fathers are not perfect those who go before us are not perfect the careers of the oil we need are not perfect in many regards they are human they can be frail sometimes you can see things about their life that may not be the best but like i thought can you endure the limitations and focus on the grace looking for a perfect vessel will leave you cheated forever because you are not even one yourself if Jesus were to walk upon the earth and he was going to be your mentor you will fight him one day a man who flogs people one day then he's with a woman at the well alone alone then he enters the house of a corrupt tax collector and he tells you I'm sinless you say you are joking don't don't play with my intelligence that is the Jesus you are saying you love many people love him because he's in heaven if he's on earth in two weeks you'll be tired I'm just saying that not to justify licentiousness I'm just saying the treasure is in earthen vessels searching for perfection before your heart opens will leave you in embarrassment the vessels are frail some of them are temperous like Elijah some of them may be unstable like Abraham yet God will not choose another vessel it is still Abraham as temperous as Elijah was the anointing did not leave him to another person hallelujah let me teach you whenever you go for a meeting or you go for a place you go to a place look beyond the limitations there you may not enjoy the praise and worship maybe they may be jumping around maybe but hence you are there look for Jesus if you search for Jesus in the midst of the lampstands you will find the son of man no matter how frail sometimes the careers of this anointing can be childish as men of God, we can behave very immature sometimes in all honesty. Look beyond that limitation and focus on the anointing. The man tells a lot of lying testimonies. May God help him, but there is still an anointing there. <laughs> sometimes the people jump and exaggerate things. Don't worry, forgive them and pray for their growth. But there is still a testimony there. The man loves God but he loves money too forgive him while he's learning and focus on receiving it because let me tell you the vessels that come to you may not come in a fashion that sometimes you desire look beyond their frailty and see to it that although the man may be a talkative there is a real anointing within him if you can endure the smell the mystery of impartation is hidden in the riddle of Samson he said out of something strong has come something sweet it was a carcass 
the bee went to make honey in a carcass they were fresh trees but they chose a carcass so if you want honey you have to endure the smell of the carcass the question is can you endure the smell it is true that the vessel may not be perfect but out of something strong and sometimes something weak there is still something sweet within it your father may have been an irresponsible man but one wisdom key he will tell you may be what saves your company is someone learning tonight we have a few minutes we are going to be praying i will speak over the sick and declare an impartation upon you and we're done rise up on your feet for your name is holy your holy holy are you Lord. a new season the graces the anointings the empowerments that i need for the next level of my life i contend for them by faith tonight someone open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray outside pray follow it online pray the grace needed the grace needed for the next level the impartation needed for the next level the grace needed for the next level the Ah, someone pray the grace needed to bring glory to your apostolic call, your prophetic call, your pastoral call, your evangelistic call. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to invest in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 29, please everybody look. Matthew chapter 25. I believe that should be verse 8 or 9 Matthew 25 this was the parable of 10 virgins please look up the first thing you notice from that parable is that all of them were virgins so it was not an issue of righteousness or unrighteousness all 10 were virgins but the Bible says five were wise and it took time to know that five were wise because all of them started at the same it was the delay of the bridegroom that showed those who were wise and those who were foolish are we together and the bible says that in verse 8 the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil we don't need candles we don't need lanterns we have them but give us of your for our lambs even though without oil are going down 
verse 9 here is the recommendation but the wise answered and said not so we too we received he said lest there be not enough for us but if your oil is finished there is a recommendation he says go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself there are some people commissioned by God by mercy on earth they are called them that sell only that they do you don't buy it with money this is not talking about transaction manipulative transaction I don't know what year it was that I came here I preached a message by the truth please go and listen to it I told you that there are five currencies that we use to purchase things within the spirit number one is called humility with meekness you can use meekness as a currency and buy you can use hunger as a currency and buy you can use faith as a currency and buy it says go to them that sell and buy in every generation there are a few privileged them that sell custodians of the graces of God in many regards it is an election of grace so no man can boast when you have found mercy with God you will never find a reason to brag but let me tell you the truth it takes humility to draw this thing is a relay the mantles that are upon our lives are older than us we also received it we also received it hmm. those who ran ran faithfully and at the end of their days they turned and said whoever is willing let him come and some of us with childlike humility we came and by mercy he has granted us this grace let me tell you this there is oil you need for your lamp and by the mercies of God in this place there are them that sell hmm. in this place there are them that sell it's only that your currency tonight can be discernment your currency tonight can be humility your currency tonight can be hunger are we together so you're going to pray the final prayer Lord I humble myself to receive I humble myself to receive go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Until the coming of the king. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, keep me burning Until the coming of the King For out of my belly Shall flow rivers Rivers of living waters Are you praying? That out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. E -I -E -I -A. Out of my belly, say, out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. E -I -E -I -A. Your praise shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Sing e i e i a e e i e i a e e i e i a e e i e i a e. Sing e i e i a e. Ya 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 
When Jesus came to the world, he walked with men and he became the light that shined among men. You see, Jesus walked for some years after the temptation in the wilderness. And as the Spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. You see, when um, the devil asked him, or Satan now to be precise, he said, I can't you turn this stone to bread? Jesus responded, he said, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. You see, after hearing this word today and these prayers, to be precise, we believe that uh, your life is being transformed and there's a conviction in your heart that God is doing a new thing in your life. And as you've watched this today, we believe and we are as we we are we are set that God will do great things in your life today. So therefore, if this is your first time connecting with us, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button and if you have been part of us all these years we celebrate you thanks for staying tuned and also do so by clicking on the notification bell so that you can get daily upload of our videos daily and our team is set to bring you um, powerful prayers chants and worship and charge from the man of god hallelujah and also please comment if you have any um, conviction in your heart please comment in the comment section and do so by sharing to your loved ones because by doing so others too will be blessed through you by clicking on the share button hallelujah please love and celebrate you thank you